Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election. Today I want us to look at the endorsement of P2B by the highly revered The Economist of London. And before we go into details of, of this endorsement by The Economist, which is coming just a few days to Nigeria's all-important presidential election, it is important that we look at the background of what the economists said that uh, made them to think that P. Toby, the presidential candidate of the Liberal Party, is the best candidate for Nigeria on February 25, 2023 presidential election. The Economist, in a, a well-written editorial, which it titles that Nigeria desperately needs a new kind of leadership, he explained what is wrong with Nigeria, and then he the, the nail at the head by saying that Obi is the best among the lot. Now, before I go into that, if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. According to The Economist, Nigeria has been cursed with bad rulers. A military regime gave way to democracy in 1999. But since the election have been offered, vote, but since then, elections have been offered voters an ugly selection of the ancient, the incompetent, and most recently, a former military dictator. Parties have stoked ethnic divisions, intimidated their opponents, and bought votes. Many candidates, federal, State and local seek power to grab a share of the country's oil wealth. Successive governments have been deeply corrupt. Turnout has steadily fallen. But as Nigerians go to the polls on February 25th, P2B, a third party presidential candidate, offers a measure of hope. Africa's most populous country is in, de in desperate need of it. The economy, the continent's biggest, boasts with youth potential, half the country is 18 years old or younger. A flourishing Nigeria will boost the whole of Africa. Instead, it is dragging it down. Nigerians are poorer now than they were in 2015 when the outgoing president, Muhammad Buhari, took over. At least 60 million Nigerians and rising survive on less than the equivalent of two, $2.15 per day. Mr. Buhari's protectionist policies have made things worse. In addition, the country is beset by violence. Boko Haram and East Jihadist officials launched more attacks across the Northeast last year than ever before. In the Northwest, in the Northwest, uh, in the Northwest, gang murderers and kidnappers, okay, sorry, say in the Northwest, in the Northwest, gangs, that's what they are talking about here is uh, bandits, murder and kidnap ordinary people, including school children. Farmers and herders feud over land. Fully 10,000 Nigerians were killed in conflict last year. And in a botched banknote reform just before the election has sparked riots as local banks have run, have run out of cash. 
the country is catastrophically failing to achieve its potential. Turning that around starts with a clean ballot. Rigging elections outright is harder these days, but the electoral body and police must clamp down on intimidation and vote by. Beyond that, much will depend on who wins. Bola Metunugo of the ruling APC is an old school politician who, at 70 years old, is unlikely to shake things up. He shuns scrutiny. His manifesto veers from the fanciful, tackling jihadists by topping up the water in the lecture to the incoherent, claiming to back both import substitution and the African continental free trade area. In the 90s, the American government froze some of his assets, accusing him of profiting from drug trafficking. He denies wrongdoing and reached a settlement with the American authorities. Atiku Abakar of the PDP, the main opposition, is no better. An ex-vice president, he is making a sixth run at the presidency. He has grandiose ideas for industrialization and one million new police officers, but no plan for how to pay them. Olusegun Obasanjo, the president he served, accused him of embezzling $145 million. In 2010, a report by the United States Senate alleged he was implicated in the transfer of $40 million in suspect funds to America. He also denied wrongdoing. Mr. Peter Obi, a sprinkly 61-year-old former state governor who is leading in the polls, offer an alternative. Most striking, he has urged people not to vote along ethnic or religious lines, but to favor competence. Should they do so, it will mark a radical shift in Nigeria's politics. He has warned his supporters they should expect no money in return for their votes. Mr. Toby talks of supporting businesses, freer trade, and getting a grip on Nigeria's mountain depths. He diagnoses the country's failings more precisely than his rivals, though he is not much better at explaining how he would fix them. His promise to scrap the st staggeringly wasteful petrol subsidy and rationalize the central bank many exchange rates are echoed by his opponents. Mr. Obi is not entirely new. It's not, it's not entirely a new bro. He was Mr. Abubakar's vice presidential running mate in 2019 before switching parties. He has faced questions over undeclared offshore assets. He says he earned the money in question before he took office as governor. Even if he wins, his Labour Party is very unlikely to gain a majority in the National Assembly, so governing will be hard. But he is the only candidate to offer Nigerians much hope of change. In a country that has been badly and repeatedly failed by its leaders, he is easily the best choice. That is the conclusion of the powerful editorial by the highly revered economist in their endorsement of Pitobi as the best of all the candidates. You can see that the economists, they were very careful in looking at all the three top candidates and arrived at P2B. They say P2B is the one that has concise solutions. He was able to provide solutions to Nigerian problems. He is the one that engenders hope. He is the one that can really bring hope for Nigeria and for Africa. You can see what the economy said. He said, if, it, if Nigeria rises, Africa will rise with Nigeria. The reason why Africa, but right now Nigeria is dragging Africa down. And the hope of Africa 
lies on Nigeria. He said that Atiku and Tinubu are the same thing. They didn't, there's no much difference between them. It will be a repeat of the same old journey of Nigeria. Journey of nowhere. Journey that will take Nigeria to no place. But in P2B, he's talking about a man who he doesn't pander to ethnic sentiment. You can see how the economists take, took note of the particular fact that P2B is the only candidate that is telling voters not to vote a, a, along religious or ethnic lines, that they should rather vote according to competence. The economists take, took note of this. Yet this is the same person that uh, governor of Sokoto State, Tambawa, he say he's pandering to ethnic, ethnic sentiment. It's the same person that Atiku, uh, that uh, Erofa is accusing of pandering to ethnic and religion. And the two of them, Erofa and and Tambo are the most ethnic begotted Nigerians this this country has ever seen in recent time. The most religious begotted Nigerians, two of them. Look at how Tambo sold out because of ethnicity and religious bigotry. He betrayed his friend yes on weekend. I remember when the when the when the uh, market got burned in, in, in Sokoto. Yes, so we came there and gave five hundred million naira. But on election ground, because of ethnicity, because of religious bigotry, Tambawa stepped down for Atikwa Bakan. On what basis did he stand up, step down for Atikwa Bakan? On what basis? If not a ethnic and religious bigot that could have inspired Tambor to do that. They talk about uh, Erufai. Erufai that set Kaduna on fire with his Muslim Muslim ticket. Erufai that the uh, Southern Kaduna people's union you know, accused of ethnic cleansing of their people. If, only, if not only, if not in Nigeria, that's where people like Erufa and Tambor will accuse another person of ethnic or religious bigot, which they are the masters, and their record is an open book. But that's a digress. But I, I, I brought this up because so that you see that whatever we think we are doing in this country, the international community are watching. They know who is who. They know that P2B is not an ethnic bigot. They know that P2B is not a religious bigot. P2B is talking about competence. He said, vote for the competent person. It resonated with the international community. It's resonating with Nigerians. He's the best of the lot. His integrity is impeccable. His transparency cannot be questioned. He is the one that has the clearest idea, according to the economists, on how to solve Nigeria's problem. He has been able to identify the failings of Nigeria clearly more than any candidate. That's what the economists said. And you cannot solve a problem unless you identify truly all the dimensions of that problem. So people have been able to identify the failings of Nigeria, analyze it well, even to the admiration of the economist. And they were impressed that giving this man a chance, he will bring real change in Nigeria. The other ones competing with him, they are the same old school. If Nigeria stick with them, there will be no change. The economist is clear about it. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have to debate much about it. He said that P2B is easily the best choice 
say P2B is easily the best choice. So the ball is on the court of Nigerians. The world is watching you. Do not sell your vote. Do not betray your country. The, a lot of a lot of nations around the world, especially in Africa, are looking up to Nigeria to make the right moves. This is an opportunity for Nigeria to make the more right move. P2B has gotten this endorsement, not out of ethnic sentiment, not out of religious sentiment, but, but from an unbiased and highly revered economist that have no reason to, to favor P2B out of sentiment. But they, 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 are, they are endorsing him because of his capacity. You can see that the economists also take, took note of the fact that P2B have been winning in all the polls. They, 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 they don't understand the importance of polls. They didn't have to denigrate the polls like Aerofire and the APC spokesperson to, to cast aspersions and doubt over the polls in which P2B have been winning. Because they know that those polls are critical, are important. If they are not credible, if they are not important, the highly revered economists will not even cite them as evidence of how well P2B has done coming from a third party in just about eight months. It is a, it's, it's, it's a testimony of P2B's great mobilization and the obedience great enthusiasm that by February 25, when they're able to execute this effectively, it can only be compared to what the use of America did in 2008 when Barack Obama emerged the president of the United States, the first black man to do so. Or it can also be equated to Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, who in 2017 became the president of France just one year after he formed a new party. That is what will be quoted with what, will, what the obedience and Nigerians will achieve by the time P2B wins the February 25, 2023 presidential election. It is doable. The ball is in the court of Nigerians. Vote and defend your vote. Vote and stay in your polling unit until the votes are counted and transmitted. Do not vote and go home. Do not vote and go home. You are the structure. They say Labour Party has no structure. You have to prove to them that you are a structure that day by being there. All of us are agents on our polling units. We must be there. We must ensure that the writing is done. Let the votes be done transparently. Let it be transmitted transparently in the view of all Nigerians in each polling units across the country. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button. Hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you will be among the first to know. God bless you. And please, don't forget to like this video because when you like this video, Google will rank it high and recommend it and recommend it for more people. And with more people watching it, they will see the need to vote for P2B on February 25th and defend their votes so that the will of God for Nigeria will be accomplished. Thank you for watching this. God bless you and yours.